Hello and welcome to Rising Match Day this Saturday the 25th of September. I'm Owen Evans, looking ahead to tonight's Rising game against the Coma Defiance. But first, let's look back to last week's match against Orange County. So a second clash from OC after Rising faced them back in August, with the hosts snatching a draw at the death. That wasn't how this one was going to turn out though. Within 10 minutes, rising with the advantage. This corner not dealt with, Santi Moa gets the goal. Moa looking to have doubled Rising's advantage with this shot from outside the area, but it wouldn't ultimately count. Referee Elton Garcia ruling that Aidan Quinn prevented the goalkeeper from playing the ball by being in his line of sight, and he was in an offside position at the time the shot was taken. So a free kick coming out for Orange County, the score staying at 1-0. But if Rising were already unhappy with the referee, they were about to get unhappier. Tate Schmidt had already picked up a yellow card in the first half, so when he put his hand on the back of an OC striker who went to ground, Garcia with little hesitation showing him another, rising down to 10 men in first half stoppage time. And not long after the break, Orange County finding their equaliser. Ronaldo Damas, the joint second highest goal scorer in the conference, gets his goal with a pinpoint header, one all. Despite battling for the best part of 45 with 10 men, Rising would get their chance late. Aidan Quinn's ball across the face of goal found Darren Mattox in acres of space, whose tapping gave Rising the three points with his first goal at Wildhorse Pass. So 2-1 on the night for Phoenix, here's the reaction from after the match. I have never been more proud of a group of players. That was, I told them at halftime, I mean, I think they were more calm than I was. I, I might have put a hole in the wall and and had a few things to, to scream and shout. Thank goodness the staff lets me be alone for a little bit. Uh, but I go into the locker room and they were quiet and they were calm and they knew. And I told them before the game, <laughs> and they, you got, they'll laugh, I said that they had superpowers. And to think about what superpower they were gonna use tonight and uh, resilience, determination, to play with 10 for 45 minutes, to give up a goal two minutes into the second half and to play the way that they did. And it's about, what, 90 degrees with, what, a lot of humidity? And I I've never been more proud of a group of players. That was unbelievable. Oh, you know, we know we're a good team. We know we're at home. We know we got the fans behind us. I told the guys in the locker room, be in a block of four in midfield and center back, set on um, full backs, and I'll be up front. And eventually, these guys are going to push, 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 and they're going to break down. And we're going to get a chance to get behind them. And we did just that. We did just that. Obviously, when, when you are with confidence, goals will come a little easier. 
but as I said, like I've been playing 24 games. Some might score, some I don't score, but uh, you know, uh, it's it's good to participate and and to help the team. Sometimes with goals, sometimes with with passes, like you know, at the end with Aiden Queen and then Aiden Queen to 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 Darren. That doesn't go in my, on my stat board, but I'm super happy because I help the team somehow. So sometimes it's not about scoring. Sometimes it's just about being part of this team and even the guys that don't play, they are also pushing us forward, so I don't know. So a spirited performance by Rising despite being a man down for much of the game. In fact, despite the disadvantage, recording 50% more shots than their opponents on the night. Well, one thing of note, Joey Kalistri brought on after the red card for Tate Schmidt. He'd previously been playing in games filling in for Solomon Asante as a winger. But what is the transition like between different positions from game to game? Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, you know, I've gotten used to it a little bit. So I, uh, you know, they, they know that I can, I can play in a couple of different spots and I'm, and I'm comfortable, you know, whether it's center mid, right mid, left winger, right back. Um, you know, I'm comfortable in, in wherever I, uh, I'm needed. So I think... Uh, you know, it's good that they they trust me in those situations, and I and I know that, you know, wherever it is, I'll, I'm I'm out there to to help the team win. And you know, given how much you're being put around in different places, if you had to nail down and say what your position is now, if someone asked you that, what would you say? It's a t it's a tough question. You know, I've I've actually thought about that a lot too, and since uh, since I've been here, but uh, you know, I, I you know, I'd say my my biggest threat is is goal scoring. So you know, I, I I'd say winger would be my you know, my most natural position. Um, but, you know, playing in the center with the way we play is it's very attack minded, obviously. So I think that fits well. And, you know, at right back, it's it's good because you get to see the field from a different perspective. You get to join the attack, but also, you know, make sure we shore up the back line. So I think it's uh, it's another good spot for me. Well, lots of playoff permutations coming today. But before we get into those, let's look back at results from the rest of the Pacific Division over the last week. We'll start at Oakland on Saturday, where Roots faced LA Galaxy 2. Goalless for much of the game, but a clumsy challenge on Galaxy's Jonathan Perez saw the visitors awarded a second half penalty. Taylor Davila steps up to take it and buries the only goal of the game, 1-0 to LA Galaxy 2. Also on Saturday, Sacramento hosting San Antonio, they kept up the low scoring trend. Right around the same minute as that last game too, this one from a corner not dealt with, Courtney Ford gets up for the goal. Just the one goal in this one, but no shortage of drama deep into stoppage time. A mass confrontation sees Izmir Pekmic sending off San Antonio's goalscorer as well as Sacramento's Malik Foster in the 98th minute of the match. Only Rising who avoided the 1-0 on the weekend, the exact same scoreline on Sunday between Loyal and Defiant. Josh Yarrow credited with a header off a corner, even if it looked like it took a big deflection off the defender. San Diego take the spoils. Into midweek and Tacoma finding themselves on the back of a 1-0 loss yet again. This time at home to Sacramento, Carlton Belmar's ball across met by Darius Formella for the game's only goal. And a final match also on Wednesday, Roots hosting Loyal. Any drop points by Oakland would have seen Rising clinch a playoff spot. Not on the cards though, Johnny Rodriguez's acrobatic effort putting the hosts up early. Yeah. 
The sides were brought level right before the break. Another impressive goal. This one from San Diego's Colin Martin, who hits it from distance to make the score one all. One last twist in this one, Guillermo Diaz brought down for a penalty in the second half. Jose Hernandez steps up to take it and it goes in despite the keeper's best efforts. So that win for Oakland lifting them into a playoff spot for the first time this season thanks to their head to head record with Tacoma. Not much movement elsewhere though, in fact not any movement. On to the possible outcomes today, a rising win tonight will secure the team's place in the playoffs regardless of other matches. However, if other results go their way, they could clinch the division title today as well. All of these rely on Phoenix winning, but if Oakland beat Orange County, the latter will be unable to overtake Phoenix. And if San Diego fail to get a win away to Las Vegas, they too will be unable to catch Rising. All of those games, including Risings, kicking off at 7pm tonight. So, are the boys paying that much attention to where the standings lie and all the different permutations? Yeah, you know, we're... You know, obviously that's in the back of your head, but at the same time, I think we're more focused on on us and our and our team goals and you know where we want to be. So you know, obviously the first the first hurdle you got to get over is is clinching the playoffs, and you know hopefully we can do that this weekend. Next, you got to look to winning your division, and then from there, winning the Western Conference, winning Sporter Shield. So you know we're we're focused inward and and looking at you know our games and what we can control. So I think that's uh, the mentality we have going forward right now. I guess is there any worry that maybe once you win the division the foot might come off the gas a little bit that you might slip up compared to maybe El Paso or Tampa honestly no you know we we have such a driven group this year it's 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 so fun to be a part of you know trainings are competitive you know we 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 demand a lot from each other and and we know that with the type of players we have the type of staff we have we're not going to be we're not going to be taking our, our foot off the gas at, at any point and now, with playoff qualification looking almost inevitable, could we see some rotation or experimentation over the coming week? Well, there, this club, and, and I've always said it's about winning trophies, and there's three trophies that we can get. The Supporters' Shield, or whatever they call it, um, the Western Conference Championship, and the USL Cup. Those are the only three trophies that are left or that are available, and, and we're... Uh, we're fighting for all three. So as you prepare for the playoffs, you start to think about how important is the supporter shield and where are we at? What do the standings look like? Um, you know, I think it was four years ago, we had a chance to probably be one or two in our, in the West. We went to Vegas. I switched the team up. We lost. Uh, we ended up, I believe third or fourth, but everything fell our way and we ended up with two home games anyway. So it, it's, you just have to do the right thing by the players you have to look at each game individually and make sure that you prepare the group the best that you possibly can. And I'm so happy with, you know, David Loera and, and Luis Manuel, uh, Jonathan Levin, uh, Prince, Ivan. I mean, John Baccaro now is a nine, David Egbo. And then the back four, you've got our left backs of Tate and Ryan have both done well. Joey Calistri has proven he can play right back. And then you have Manuel Madrid, who's who's done a good job. So, I mean, we have two very good teams and I feel very good using any player that I that I want, you know, and I feel pretty confident that I could I probably could have made, had two teams make the playoffs this year. So what should we expect to see out of Tacoma tonight? You know, I think Wade is, has done an unbelievable job with that group and they've got some experienced guys in there and um added with some really really talented young players and i think they had a hard time at at san diego um that they got really spread out and and that's important it's a little harder at cheney to spread them out and they can really play in tight spaces very well so um when we go up there we just have to be super physical yeah you know i mean i think any game we go into we're we're, we're going there looking to win you know we uh we're confident. Obviously, we know Tacoma is a, is a good team. Have, they have a lot of talented young players, but, uh, you know, and, and they're also going to know us pretty well, obviously, from playing us, you know, a few times already. But, you know, any game we're going into, whether home or on the road, we're going there hoping to get three points. 
Well, the last time that Rising travelled up to Tacoma, Shantz not best impressed with the playing surface up there. Indeed, he wasn't with LA Galaxy 2s either. That's a side that they'll face on Wednesday. So have the boys done anything in particular to prepare for that? Well, we're, we started our overseeding process here. So we have two yellow fields that, that I think we could probably use if we need to. But we don't, I, I, like I said, I've got an awesome grounds crew here and um, we're not going to mess with their schedule and their plans just because we feel like we need to prepare on a different field. Um, I don't know. I've never been like that as a coach, you know, and I've always thought as a player, why would you want to play and train on a bad field in order to prepare to be on a bad field? I mean, wouldn't you just want to do six days on a perfectly manicured pitch and then deal with just one game? Um, I don't think, I don't think it's good because you never know. I mean, we might get there and they've made some changes or adjustments or it's worse. I mean, it's, it's hard to prepare. The only thing I think you would ever do that for is turf. And, and we did that when we went out to Charlotte, we trained on turf here uh, in, in Chandler and uh, before we left. And sometimes it's helpful. Sometimes it's not, it's, it's really up to each, each situation. And one other factor, the cold, at least compared to Arizona. Forecast saying it could be in the 60s come kickoff. What's that like to deal with? That's kind of, you know, that's kind of a, a nice thing, honestly. I mean, I'm from Chicago, so I, I love it. You know, that's that's still warm for me. But, um, you know, it's even even here, it's getting nice for, for our night games and stuff. Um, you know, it's, it's nice to go in some slightly chillier climates and, and get a change of pace for a little bit, get away from the heat. Um, but yeah, you know, I think, uh, you know, it's starting to get nice in Arizona. So hopefully we have a lot of, you know, and all of our home games, you know, from now on for the playoffs and everything here. Well, that's all for this morning. For the latest from inside Cheney Stadium, make sure to give me a follow on the social media accounts above. Until then, enjoy the match. Goodbye.